I didn't believe this until I read it. I thought it was a joke, but it's, it's genuine. It's on the internet, so it must be, it must be true. Hello, how are we all doing? Welcome to a very cold, windy Peak District. Also very cloudy. Today, today we're heading up to Derwent Edge. We're going to walk the full length of Derwent Edge down towards Lost Lad and then come back again. Walk of about, I think it's about five miles. I think four and a half, five miles. Part just down there, at Cutthroat Bridge, alongside Cutthroat Bridge. Nice steady walk up. So we're just at the start of Derwent Edge. We'll be going up there across that way you might recognize this view from the first video that I did so we've got Lady Bower Mam Tor Wind Hill Castleton's over that way and Kinder Scout in the distance yeah so not in the first video we walk down there over towards the Derwent Dam. I say we're going to walk this way along the Derwent Edge. That's hurling stones, wheel stones, cakes of bread, brilliant rock formations, and hopefully, if we've got time, because I think I've got about two hours worth of light left, I'm going to go to uh, head down towards Lost Lad. Derwent Edge runs south to north, or north to south, whichever way you're coming from, alongside uh, alongside Lady Bower Reservoir, and over, over that way we've got Sheffield, and then Manchester, so on and so forth. On a clear day, you can't really see it today, but you can just about make out Sheffield, but on a clear day, I noticed this in the summer. You can just about see West Burton Power Station, if you know where that is. It's about, it's about five miles from where I live in Gainsborough. So you've got views on a clear day of what? Sort of 35, 40 miles. It's a little bit of a climb up to get up here, but it's not too steep, nice and steady. No, when, and when you're up here, it's quite flat, a little bit of undulation. Wheelstones, probably one of the most famous photographed rock formations in the Peak District. It kind of looks like someone just picked them up, picked the stones up and just dumped them, dumped them flat one on top of each other. Get out of the wind. Let's find the way up. Should we form one handed? There we go.
super simple. It's got jeg, no fuss, no nonsense. Happy days. <laughs> about two thirds across now that's destination back tour we're just passing what's called the cakes of bread rock formation presumably because they uh, look like squash bread cakes which the locals call bread buns around here bread cake there's been a cake. It's a bun. Red bun. All day long. Anyway. Sun's still holding on. It's getting cold though now. That wind that wind's picking up a bit. Keep moving. Keep warmed up. We go then back tour at the end of what well, I call the end of Derwent Edge, anyway. That's where we've come from. Along there, let's get out of this wind. And you can carry on down that path. That's Lost Lad down there. Then you drop over the brow of that hill. And it eventually takes you down towards um, Lady Bower <laughs> and Derwent Dam. There's more of these carvings on here. I don't know if you can see that. Picking up quite well, some W. Wilson, 1860. There is one on here somewhere, and I can't remember whereabouts it is. That some two people got engaged and have carved it in the rock. Yeah, there we go, look. Mary, Jack, you can just about make out engaged. Engaged here. I can't make out. 1873, 19, 1933, I think it is. So there you go. Oh, these rocks have got plenty of stories to tell.
proper windy up here now. Trick point. And just there, where the brow of that hill is, is can for um, what's called Lost Lad. And the story behind that is there was a little shepherd boy came up in the snow one winter to bring all the sheep in and evidently he got lost and that's where they found him found him curled up sadly sadly passed away over on that brow there so hence the name Lost Lad Look at the views though, even on a bleak day like this, the views are amazing. So we've got Mamtor, Loose Hill, down to Kinder, Kinder Scout, and we'll come back that way towards Castleton, Sheffield. So we'll head back now that way, hopefully. We'll just catch a bit of a sunset. So if you do decide to come up, come up onto Derwent Edge. Obviously you can go from south to north, which we've done today, or you can come up and go north to south. You can park down there at Fair Homes down there, Derwent Dam. You can come up this path, up past Lost Lad, up this path, straight down, back the way we've came, and then you can double back on yourself and do a full circular back to back to Lady Bower. But we've parked at uh, Cutthroat Bridge. There is a couple of ways you can come up from there, but this is this is you know if you just want a nice steady walk. You can do this in an afternoon couple of hours it's a nice steady walk up and then once you're up here it's a little bit undulating it's nice and straightforward so how are we all doing anyway hope we're all good it's only what 10 days till christmas now more importantly four days four days from we left at work that's it for the year. One more Monday. One more Monday to go. But sadly we've got to do it all again, haven't we? It'll soon be over with. Such, a, such an optimist. Anyway. For me, it'll be a quiet one. Well, quiet-ish. It's me and my daughter this year. It'll be me on, me on cooking duties. She can do the pots, she can get the rubbish bit out of the way. But yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be nice because she's only got, I think she's got Christmas Day and New Year's Day off work. I think she's got one day one day in between, so she's going to be working most of it, bless her. But we're going to make it a good one. However, however it comes, I mean Christmas, Christmas for everybody's not, it's not all perfect is it? I mean I don't think there's any such thing as a perfect Christmas. What even is a perfect Christmas? To me, a perfect Christmas will just be, it'd be boring. You know, Christmas time you want stupidity and nonsense and little things going wrong, stuff that you remember, you know, that your kids are going to remember. You now your kids aren't going to kids aren't going to remember all that little perfect things and they're going to remember the stupid stuff that went wrong oh mum can remember this, oh dad can you remember that you know but some people some people Christmas is you know it's a shit time of the year for some people you know whether I don't know you might be struggling financially you might be suffering a loss remembering 
remembering people that are no longer there, no longer here, and you struggle with it. Now there's all sorts of reasons. There's all sorts of reasons why Christmas is in always the best time of the year. You know, just because it's Christmas. You now it's meant to be a time of magic and all that stuff. You, you know, if, if you're struggling, it, it just doesn't stop at Christmas. It doesn't stop on Christmas Eve and it gives you it gives you a break for a couple of days. Now, for some people, Christmas is just trying to get through it in your own way. And if that's, I've done it. That some Christmases for me have been like that. You know, they've been horrible. They've been you know on my own and stuff like that. And when I when I'm struggling with mental health, it's an horrible time because you kind of forced into you kind of forced into trying to be happy. And that in itself, if you are struggling, you now that's an awful thing. Because you're just pretending. You're just pretending to try and please other people and fit in. You know, and it's not good. So if you are struggling, you know, and you are just trying to get through it, don't feel guilty. Don't feel pressurised into doing things you don't want to be doing just because it's Christmas to please other people. You know, there's people struggling. Like I say, struggling financially, people facing an uncertain future, you know, just, just, just the whole host of things. So if your Christmas is your stereotypical, loads of family, loads of presents, loads of food, and all that good stuff, that's amazing. But on the flip side, if your Christmas is you're just getting up in the morning and you're thinking fuck this and and you might be on your own you might be suffering and you might be with people and and you like i say you're forced you're forced into joining in other people's joviality and stuff don't feel guilty no do your christmas to fit with how things are in your life fuck everybody else you look at Christmas and what Christmas is all about, and it kind of start. It start. It all starts in September. I mean, I went to our local garage last night to get some fuel, and there's eating there's uh, mini eggs. Selling mini eggs. It's not even been Christmas. Week before Christmas and selling mini eggs. Everything just forced down your throat, isn't it? It's like Christmas. It's September. Once the kids have gone back to school after some while it is bang it's in your face you see that little snicket of stuff on the shows in tesco advent calendars and all that stuff and it's just relentless and you can see why people get fucked off of it because by the time christmas comes around you've had enough of it it's, it's mad really so if you are If you are fretting, so what if you burn all your roast haters? So what if you bollocks up your gravy? It doesn't matter, does it? It's Christmas. Everyone's panicking. Fretting over a glorified Sunday dinner. Which, let's be right, that's all it is. It's a roast dinner with turkey instead of chicken or beef. And you get to wear a stupid hat. But you know, it'll all be alright. It will. You'll get through it. It'll be all be alright. Like I say, don't don't worry about what anybody else is doing. If someone's got matching pajamas and a Christmas Eve box on Christmas Eve and they're sticking a photo of it on Facebook and you haven't, so what? The mat does it. What is a Christmas Eve box anyway? Where's that come from? Something else. Something else that's shoved down your throat. But please don't take this as me being like a Grinch and unseasonable and all that sort of stuff. Because I'm not. Far from it. Now Christmas is. I enjoy Christmas. It's nice. 
just do what you can to get through it if you are struggling you know it might it might help you it might help you being around people and joining in with stuff it might be the kick up the ass that you need but on the flip side of that you might just want to sit in your dressing gown all day stuff your face full of shit and watch only fools on horses if that's what gets you through your christmas that's what gets you through your christmas nobody can uh, nobody can judge what you're doing it's your life and you've got to <laughs> you, you know you've got to cut your cloth accordingly and if you do feel the need to reach out then reach out you know help still available on christmas day and over the christmas period probably more so than ever i would have thought but what i'm saying is just don't let you know do your christmas how you want to do it it's your christmas not anybody else's well the most important thing to remember is it's all going to be all right no matter what's happening How your festive period pans out, it's all going to be all right. It might not seem it. It might not seem it, but it will be. That's the most important thing to remember. But despite all that, despite the flip side to a happy Christmas, this will be the last one that I, last video I'll be doing before Christmas, probably. I think it will be. So, happy Christmas to everybody, however your Christmas comes, big, small, or otherwise. Hold on. Yeah, I hope you have a brilliant one. And uh, thank you for everybody that's taken the time to watch the videos over the last what, five weeks. Five weeks I think the channel's been going now. All of you that's taken the time to watch and subscribe and give us a thumbs up appreciated it it's appreciated because i didn't know how this was going to go when i first started this it was a bit of a little bit of a pain in the sky idea but i'm actually really enjoying doing it i really am enjoying doing it it's made, it's making me look at look at the walks a bit different obviously i'm learning all the editing and all that all that stuff so i'm learning something i'm actually researching the walks a little bit more because you kind of you kind of pick up things as you go along but what, I, what i'm trying to do if i'm trying to explain something i don't just want to fob you off of any old crap i want it to be the right thing what i'm saying if that makes sense yeah so hopefully Hopefully I'm all getting some sort of sense of why I come out and why being out in all this is good for the noggin because it is best medicine, best medicine ever. Even on a cloudy dreary day in the middle of December. So thank you once again for uh, taking the time to uh, watch and happy Christmas and a very very happy new year to each and every one of you I actually look forward to seeing you in the new year with lots more videos lots more random stuff very random stuff I've got planned I don't know how that's going to come across, but it's uh, it's very me, I'll put it that way. But anyway, that's all next year. Do some wild camping. I'm spending lots of time in Wales. Maybe have a joint up to Scotland, Lake District, and obviously plenty more, uh, plenty more Peak District adventures. So thank you once again. Going back past Wheelstones. 
golden hour. About half an hour to sunset. Beautiful. walking back to the car now you see it's getting pretty much dark sun still just setting can't believe how lucky we've been with that it was cloud it's been cloudy all day perfect it's dark apart from you see that head torch and the place is absolutely coming alive. All the nocturnal, all the nocturnal creatures of the world are coming there, uh, starting to wake up. I'm going to leave you, if you can hear me above the noise of them cars, with a couple of tales of murder. Just down here, you can see that or not. There. Cutthroat Bridge. Now back in a couple of hundred years ago, somebody was found underneath with a throat cut hence the name Cutthroat Bridge a little bit of history for you and a little bit more modern history singer Gabriel I didn't believe this until I read it I thought it was a joke but it's, it's genuine it's on the internet so it must be, it must be true uh, singer Gabriel um, I think it's her ex-partner I'm sure it, if I remember rightly it was his stepdad or his dad that he killed and he also got dumped underneath his bridge so it's a bit of a grisly name a bit of a grisly place but yeah so there you go just trying not to have nightmares thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon